Today, I'm going to show you how to create these fillable chocolate Easter eggs full of homemade toffee, just like the ones that Mrs. Weasley sent to Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the Goblet of Fire. The things we will need for Mrs. Weasley's toffee-filled Easter eggs are some plastic Easter eggs. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree, but you can get them anywhere that has the plastic eggs. You just need to make sure that they have the horizontal opening instead of it being across the middle for a vertical egg. Then you're going to need some melting chocolate, and I'm using the Ghirardelli Dark and Milk Chocolates for that, but you could also use regular chocolate chips. Just know you're going to have to temper it, which sometimes is not so easy when you're doing these projects, and I find that the candy melting wafers are a whole lot easier. We are going to need one cup of packed brown sugar as well as one cup of salted butter. We're going to need a spatula or some kind of non-stick item that you're going to be able to stir your toffee with. You'll need a pan to heat it all up on the stove as well as a glass Pyrex container to melt our chocolates in. And then we're going to optionally cover some of the toffee with some chocolate. And I have my sister here for Easter, so we are going to do chocolate that is soy-free. So we have the Guitard chocolates as well as the Nestle Toll House allergy-free chocolates back here. And then we're going to top some of it with these pecan chips. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make our eggs first. And as I said, I have my sister here, so she's going to help out. Now, this chocolate, she is not able to eat. It has soy in it, so she's just not going to eat the outside shell. She'll just gobble down the toffee. So we're going to go ahead and add our chocolates to our glass measuring cups because I won't be able to put those in the microwave. We're going to use the full containers because even if you don't use all your melted chocolate, you're able to put it back into your container. And once it's drying, you can just ziplock it back up and you're ready to use it again another time. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the microwave in 30 second intervals and continue to stir in between each round until we have a nice melted consistency. So we have our chocolate out of the microwave. We have a good melted consistency. So I'm going to show my sister how we're going to fill these up. Now there's a couple different ways that you can make hollow um, chocolates in general. It doesn't have to be eggs. It could be anything. One way is to fill the whole thing up, let it sit for a minute, flip it over, and dump the excess out. We can do that. We're actually going to treat these more like we do the hot chocolate bombs where we're going to take a spoon and kind of bring it up over the edge. And as it starts to harden, you'll just continue to do that. And then if there's excess, we can kind of spoon that out. But it, I feel like you get a better shell that way. And then we're going to pop these in the freezer for just a couple minutes and we'll be able to get a nice shell that we can pop right out of these. The beautiful part about these eggs is they were a dollar. And some of you might be able to find these on clearance after Easter even. But you just want to make sure it's a plastic egg like this. You want to make sure that it's not a metal one or something weird that, you know, might not be a good mold. Because these are going to be really easy for us to pop the chocolate right out of. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our melted chocolate and we're going to dump some in the mold. And you can always put more, you can always take some out. There's no wrong way of doing this. And then you're just going to take your spoon and start to go up the edge to create our shell. FYI, I've never done this, so mine will look like crap. No, she's never done this, so if she can do this, and it's her first time. You guys can too. Chocolates are really easy. They're not intimidating. And it's very forgiving. You really can't mess it up. If it breaks, you just start over. It's not the end of the world. And it's chocolate. It's not like it, you can't eat it. So as you can see, I'm just kind of starting to... Do you put it in the groovy things all the way up there on the edges? Or you can or not. I mean, I it far I would just take it all the way to the very edge of it. And obviously one side's going to have different grooves than another. But we're just kind of creating this shell. And honestly, anytime you do any shells, even the hot cocoa bombs or anything like that, you want to make sure that you continue to turn it because you're always going to have spots that maybe you thought you hit. But when you spin it, you realize you had a thin spot or you missed an area and you just continue to go around with your spoon because it will start to harden a little bit and tack up. And that's how you get those nice shells that are thick enough to actually put the two together. And they're not just going to break when you try to put them. And they're not going to just break when you try to put them together. But the 
big thing with these, I don't know if you guys can see the edge of my shell here. Hang on, let me get this to focus so you can see the edge of this. You want to make sure that your edges are not too thin. So the big, big emphasis is going to be to make sure that you drag your chocolate up to create those nice, strong edges because that's going to be what you end up gluing together to the other side of the egg. And if your edges aren't perfect, it's okay. We're going to melt the edges down just like you do for a hot chocolate bomb so that we get nice level planes to adhere together. Once you feel like you have a good coating, then we can pop it in the freezer. And nothing says you can't put another coat on it after it comes out of the freezer if you see some thin spots. I don't know. What do you think, Miss Master? I think it's good. So I think we can put your half in the freezer and we're going to go ahead and get our other halves ready and we will be back when they come out of the freezer. Okay, so we just pulled mine out of the freezer. I ended up putting a second coat in there and the reason it looks really messy is because the first coat was still cold so it set up really quick. Now, if this cracks on us, all I'm going to do is re-put it in there and melt and redo it, but I think we should... Keep in mind, this is a really big mold too, which bigger molds are always going to be a little easier to, or harder to put out than something small. Yep. So it came out great, however, <laughs> I broke it. But as you can see, when I do get it, it's going to be a beautiful shiny finish. So I just need to redo this one. And honestly, these little things right here may trip me up on my egg because I may just make a cracking point so we'll see I'm going to redo this one that's part of chocolate making all I have to do is pop this right back in here reheat it up in the microwave and then we're going to redo this one and we'll come back and show you how the other ones unmold okay so I pulled this out of the freezer I just undid this back egg here and we found the best method was to take it from the freezer and do a hot water bath, making sure not to get the hot water in it, and it got it to release. So let me go over to the sink, and I'll be right back. I'm on round six. <laughs> also, I just did the second coat of chocolate on this one, just so it has thick enough walls to be able to put together. So if your chocolate goes up over the edge like mine did here, I'm actually going to try to scrape that off. Because that's going to help have to, like, that's going to inhibit your chocolate from wanting to pop out as easy. Even though, I don't know if you guys can see right here, the chocolate is away from the mold in several of the parts, even if it did have the edge. But I'm just trying to give it the best possible chance. Don't squeeze. Don't squeeze. Yeah. I, that out. Do not do squeeze. Do not squeeze. Like this way? No, no. Okay. Going back in the freezer. This is patience, people. I, you know, and honestly, it's the toffee on the inside that you're going to want to eat more than anything. These are just going to be a showpiece. So if you don't want to do these and you just want to put them in pretty eggs, go for it. But I wanted to show you guys how to do it and how to do it cheap. I will put a link down below to a actual chocolate mold, but I'm going to be honest, it's not much of a different method than these, and it's a lot more expensive. Okay, so I finally just got the bottom to come out after several attempts. So I now have a bottom and a top. Now, hers finally came out, but it cracked, so we glued it back together and then we just did a little bit of drizzle, so we're letting that guy dry. So we're gonna see if he stays in one piece and we're gonna try to unmold her other half in just a few minutes here because she's trying to get the second coat in there and put it in the freezer. So we'll be right back and show you how we unmold hers, hopefully. Okay, so she's got her piece of chocolate here that has got two coats we're going to go ahead and take it over to a hot sink bath and we're going to try to dip that in there to help it unmold never squeeze the egg pull out because if you squeeze it you are guaranteeing it's going to crack so if you do the water bath and it gets a little wet it's really not a big deal because you can just dry it Oops. unless you make it a boat okay try flipping it over and maybe it'll come out Yay! Woo! 
All right, we got it. Oh, wait, don't touch. Yeah, they're crack. No, I think that's one you already did chocolate over. It's fine. So, yay. Finally have two halves. We're going to let that half glue. And then we're going to melt the edges and then put them together. But we're going to make the toffee first because we have to fill them with the toffee. Okay, so for the toffee, we're going to put the one cup of packed brown sugar. <laughs> it was packed. <laughs> and the one cup of salted butter. And then we're going to melt these down. And once it starts to boil and mix, you will boil it for four minutes and then we're gonna end up pouring it on our pan. So now that the sugar is starting to boil, we're going to go ahead and put a timer on for four minutes. And once the four minutes is done, we're going to pull it off and pour it onto a cookie sheet that we have lined with foil. And then we're going to put it in the oven for just a couple more minutes. So now we have it spread on the cookie sheet. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven for four minutes. Okay, it's been four minutes. We just popped this out of the oven. We're gonna let this cool a minute. And then half of it, we're going to add chocolate and some nuts to it. And the other half, we're just going to sprinkle some sea salt. Okay, so now that this has cooled a little bit, we're going to do chocolate and some nuts on this side. And we're gonna leave this side just plain toffee. And if these don't melt right away when you put them on there and you let them sit for a minute, we can always pop it back in the oven for just a minute to kind of help it melt a little bit. Hang on your side. But I'm going to go ahead and add some sea salt because toffee and salt is delicious. All right, so we're going to pop this back in the oven for just a minute to let it melt a little bit and then we can smear it around. Okay, so we just pulled this out after it being in there for a minute. We're going to go ahead and start to pull the chocolate over the toffee. And like I said, this is optional. And I'm going to put a link up above to my Tongue Tongue Toffee video. And it shows you, it shows me making this all with the chocolate and the salt and the nuts in case you guys needed a little bit more um, direction on how to make the toffee. And once you have it set, we're going to go ahead and put this either in the fridge or the freezer for just a little bit to finish cooling, or you can just leave it sit room temperature like overnight, and then you can crack it the next day. It just needs a while to cool. Okay, so our toffee finally cooled and we were able to break it up into some bits. So we have the half without and half with, and I'm not gonna lie, some of it didn't make it over here. Um, <laughs> but now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to put your chocolate together and how to fill it. And you could fill this with anything, but we wanted to do what Mrs. Weasley did, which was fill it with some homemade toffee. So the first thing you're gonna do is heat up your plate. Now, because my eggs are so big, I flipped the plate upside down so that I'll be able to get the whole edge of this straight. So I'm going to start with my bottom piece and we're going to flip it over and we're just going to rub it on the plate 
and that is going to melt our edges so that they're nice and straight. And they're nice and even now. Then at this point, this is where we'd fill what we want to put in here. So we're going to go ahead and melt her uh, smaller ones. We're going to melt the bottom pieces again. And that just gives us a nice even plane to be able to seal the two together. Yeah, it works really well. It's a good technique. All right, so now we are going to take some of our toffee and fill it into our eggs. And you can fill it up as much or as little as you would like. You could also get some of the edible Easter grass and you could put that in the bottom of it. I mean, the options in this are limitless. And once you get however much you want in there, then you're gonna take your top piece. And we're gonna do the same thing, but this time the melted chocolate will then also act as a glue to be able to put them together. So this is very similar to what we did with our butterbeer bombs, or if you were gonna make hot cocoa bombs, we're just doing it on a much larger scale. So now we have our melted edge. And then we're gonna seal them together. Then you can also take your finger and some of this extra chocolate and you can kind of go around the seam if you have any big holes. Now at this point, we could take some chocolate and go over the top of this, which I may do, just because that will also hide any of these little fingerprints or anything like that. If you do any of that extra chocolate embellishment, it just kind of hides and covers all the flaws and just makes it pretty. So like the one where we glued it together and then she just kind of sprinkled some uh, chocolate over the top of it, that's going to hide any of those little imperfections. And if they're not perfect, that's okay. These, you know, a lot of this is just the thought that's, that counts. They can eat the egg. They can eat what's inside. And let's be honest, Mrs. Weasley's eggs probably wouldn't have been perfect either. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and heat up a little bit more chocolate in a piping bag, and we're just going to kind of embellish our eggs. So we're going to go ahead and put the other one together, and then we'll show you how to finish them off. Okay, so we have some white chocolate that I melted in a piping bag, and then we just remelted some of the milk chocolate. And my sister's going to use the spoon to kind of drizzle it over to decorate it. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this with a piping bag or with a plastic Ziploc bag. Now, at this point, if you wanted, you could add sprinkles or anything like that, and it would stick to that wet chocolate. Um, but if not, you can just let that dry, and that is going to give us a nice finished look. So we're going to let these dry, and we'll come back and show you the finished piece. All right, so here we are. We have all of our finished eggs, and we have wrapped some of them like they would be in the package that was sent from Mrs. Weasley to Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the fourth book. Um, and it came with Percy's letter after a letter that Harry and Ron sent to Percy about Mr. Crouch, and this is Percy's agitated response. Um, and for those of you who haven't read the book, the eggs that were sent were as big as dragon eggs for Harry and Ron, and Hermione's was smaller than a chicken egg because of the article that was in Witch Weekly that talked about how Hermione allegedly broke Harry's heart with Victor Crumb. So for those of you who haven't read the book, I'm sorry that none of this makes any sense to you. I highly recommend you pick up the books and read them. There's so much more information, and they're so good. So that's going to be it. Without further ado, I'm going to let my sister whack open the Easter egg here. And that's going to be it. I hope you guys have a happy Easter. If you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much. Dibs.